Hi everyone, so for today we'll be working on the solution for Mario Less. So this is part of the problem set in week 1 of CS50 by Harvard. So this problem takes reference to the game called Mario which I believe many of us are familiar with. So in the game, in as per the picture here, we can see a right aligned pyramid and we want to recreate this in C using hashes for bricks. So it should look like this. So to start first, we should know what are the parameters that we need to work with. So firstly, we need to key in a positive integer that is between 1 and 8 inclusive. Okay, here are some examples of the kind of output that you can expect. So if you key in height as 3, this should print. Likewise, if you key in the height equals to 8, this should print. And if you key in height equals to 2, this is what you should see. So now, what if we key in a number that is not between 1 and 8 inclusive? So the system will keep prompting you for a correct height. So let's say you key in negative 1, nope, the system will just repeat itself, key in a height. So you key in 0, nope, the system will just keep prompting you again and again until you key in a number that is accepted by the system that is between 1 and 8. So let's say I were to finally key in a number 4 and your output will show as such. Okay, so this is what we are looking to get. So now what we can do is that you can see that we've actually come up with the start of the program that we have in terms of the logic and flow in simple sentences. Let's formulate the code now. So we can see the user will be prompted to key in an integer that is between 1 and 8 inclusive. So you can see that we also need to put in a validation rule to check the input before we even proceed to the next step. So if the input is wrong, the system will reject the output and keep prompting the user for another input. So what does this mean? The system will keep prompting for height as long as the height key in is less than 1 or greater than 8. Okay? So for simplicity's sake, instead of key in the word height, let's just use n to represent height. So now for the rest of the video, whenever I use the term n, I'm referring to the height that the user is keying in. Okay? So now let's hop over to our program. Okay? So we're going to start with the usual header. So let's do include CS50, include standard IO. Then we'll start with the headers in main void. Now I'm going to just write a comment here where this portion of text we're going to do is to get the input of height. So now we will need to tell the system that there will be an input called height and this is an integer. So we're going to signpost it. So int n, so what this means is that there will be an integer that we will refer to as n. Now we will ask the user to key in the input and this input will be rejected if it is less than 1 or greater than 8. So what we're going to use is going to use a do while loop. So let's start here, do, open curly bracket. So height equals to, we want to get an integer from the user where we will prompt them for the height. Okay, and we will keep doing this as long as the user keys in a height that is less than 1 or height more than 8. So this means that you will keep asking and asking and asking the user to key in height as long as they key in something that does not fall within the acceptable range. Okay, so this is how we're going to do it. So if you want, we can actually do a checkpoint here and run this program to confirm that we got our code correct. So what we can do is that maybe we can say if the above code is correct, we can get the system to print a success message. So we can say print f, let's put so far so good, uh, backslash m. Okay, so let's try this. Make mario dot slash mario. Uh, let's key in 9. Okay, good. We can see that it rejected. Uh, let's key in minus 1. Okay, good. It rejected it. Now let's key in height equals to 3. Okay, so far so good. Let's key in height equals to 8. So far so good. Okay, so now let's move on to formulating how we want to tell the system to print the hashes. So for this example going forward, I will use an example where height equals to 5. So height now we're going to be represented by the letter N. So when you first see the output that's expected, you might be asking yourself, how do I print a right aligned pyramid in C? Okay, so the thing is that text prints from left to right. So to make it easier for us to visualize what we are actually trying to do, if I put it into a table, maybe you can start to see that actually we can print a mixture of blank spaces and hashes to get our pyramid. Okay, so sometimes it might be a bit difficult to visualize what we need to print if we just look at blank spaces only. So to make it easier, maybe instead of using blank spaces, for now I will use dots. Okay, so I think this looks a little bit better now, doesn't it? 
So what you can see is that when height equals to 5, for the first row, there will be 4 dots printed first before 1 hash. For the second row, there will be 3 dots printed first followed by 2 hashes, so on and so forth. Okay? So what we are trying to do is that we are trying to essentially print a square grid where the number of rows and columns equals to n. Okay? So in this case, there will be 5 rows and 5 columns. And now what we want to do is that we want to find a formula that we can key in to see, such that when we run it in the program, the program will know when to print a dot and when to print a hash. Okay, so let's start really small here. What we're going to do is that for the rows, we're going to label it as i, right? And do you remember that in C, instead of our starting point, instead of starting from 1, we actually start from 0. So I'm going to just label it as that, okay? So we'll use i to represent the rows, and the row starts from 0. So you can see that when n equals to 5, I have actually rows from 0 to 4. So likewise, now I have rows, right? So now I want to know what are my columns. So columns will be represented by j. And likewise, the number of columns I have would be from 0 to 4. Okay? okay so can you see that the number of rows and columns I have is actually 4, which is 5 minus 1. Okay? So maybe it's not too much of a stretch here, but you can see that the number of rows and columns I have will be equals to n minus 1. Okay? Because remember, for c, instead of starting from a starting point of 1, we start from 0. So that's why when you key in a height of 5, the number of rows and columns you have would be n minus 1. Okay? Good. So now what we want to do is that we're trying to get a pattern that we can then make into a formula. So let's start really from baby steps, okay? So looking at the first grid, you can see i will be equals to 0 and j equals to 0. So that is the intersection point. That is the coordinates that we're looking at. Okay? So I'm just going to write it out and from there we can see how we can observe a pattern. So starting from the first grid, you can see that i equals to 0 and j equals to 0. And if I were to add this up, it equals to 0 and my output is actually a dot. Moving on to the next column, i equals to 0 still, j equals to 1. So i plus j equals to 1. My output is still a dot. So I'll do this for my next line. i plus j now is 2. It's still a dot. Moving on, i plus j equals to 3. It's still a dot, right? But now, moving on to i plus j equals to 4, can you see that now I get a hash? So really what we want to do is that we want to identify the tipping point where a condition is met such that now it starts to print a hash. Okay, so let's start from the bottom. So when do we get a hash? We got a hash when i plus j equals to n minus 1. Okay, i plus j equals to 4, right, which is n minus 1. So this will be my observation. Right, so we can move up the line now. Can you see that it printed a dot when i plus j is less than n minus 1? So can you see that this condition holds true to print a dot? And then to print a hash, it was only when i plus j equals to n minus 1. Okay, so at this stage, you know, we can see a bit of a pattern forming, but definitely it's too early to say. We need to check out the other rows to see whether we are coming up with a pattern. Okay, so now let's move on to the next row where i equals to 1. So let's start first. So you can see that for the first three columns, when i plus j equals to um, 1, 2, and 3 respectively, my output was still a dot. And my observation is that i plus j is still less than n minus 1. Okay, so now we move on to the fourth column. So when i plus j equals to 4, right, a hash was printed. And moving on to the last column, when i plus j equals to 5, which is more than n minus 1, a hash was printed. So I'll just fill up the observations that I have. When i plus j is more than n minus 1, a hash is printed. And when i plus j equals to n minus 1, a hash is printed. So can you see a pattern actually forming? So let's just move on to the last rule that we're going to try it out. So we can see there's two dots when i plus j equals to 2 and 3 respectively. And likewise for the last three rows, can you see now I have a pattern. And I think now we can pretty much confidently say that we've identified the formula. And this can actually be represented where as long as i plus j is less than n minus 1, we will print a dot, right? And for all other cases where the only other cases we have would be when i plus j equals to n minus 1, or i plus j is more than n minus 1, we print a hash. Okay, so now we're going to put all these thoughts into code, right? So we have the first portion done already. 
So now we want to move on to the second portion. What we want is that we want the system to actually print a grid where the length and breadth are the same because we want it to print a square grid, right? And then after that, we want to see that for every grid, we need to let the system know when to print a dot and when to print a hash. So this will actually be done through a nested loop, okay? So some of us might be a little bit unfamiliar with nested loops, so I'll just cover it very briefly. So this is what helped me understand it best. I won't say that it might be the best explanation for sure, but uh, it just helped me understand it, so I hope that maybe this will help someone too. Okay, so can you see that when we want to print this square grid here, as you see on the slide, I want to print the rows first, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do is that we start bit by bit. So we're going to start by printing the horizontal rows first. So we're going to be using the command called for, okay? So you can see that I'm going to print my first row, where my first row starts from, zero. So what you must do is that you must tell the system that your starting point is where i equals to zero. Okay, I will want to keep printing rows until i is less than n, right? Because do you recall, the number of rows that we have equals to n minus 1. Okay, and after that, because we are printing rows incrementally, that's why we put i++. plus plus. So to summarize, what this first line is saying is that number 1, my starting point is i equals to 0. Number 2, the number of rows to print would be when i is less than n. Right, and number 3, uh, my rows are going to print incrementally by 1. Okay, so by doing this, can you see that I'm already starting to print my rows? But now what I want to do is to print my columns, right? So this is how I actually start to form my grid. So likewise, for every row that we print, we want to print columns. So this is why within my for loop, I need to print another loop to print my columns, okay? So likewise, j starting point is from 0, which is why we have j equals to 0, right? And how many columns do we want, right? So the number of columns equals to the same as rows. So that is why we will print columns until j is less than n. And likewise, j will print incrementally, which is why we put j plus plus. Okay? So as the system is printing this grid, we will say that as long as i plus j is less than n minus 1, we print a dot. So if i plus j is less than n minus 1, we print a dot. If not, right, or else, we will print a hash. Okay, so can you see essentially what we're doing is that for all the observations that we had earlier on, we're just converting it into code here. Okay, so now let's just put everything back into the IDE environment. So going back to where we stopped in the previous section, we should remove this part so far so good because that was just an intermediate checkpoint that we had included. So let me just remove this, okay? So let me just write a comment about what this section is going to do. So for this section, we're going to print desired pyramid height, okay? So now what we're going to do is that we're going to put a nested loop in. So as what I've shared earlier on, we're going to use the for command. So we'll do for open bracket int i equals to zero because that would be the starting point, right? and then i will be less than n, and then i++. plus plus. Then after that, I'll open another curly bracket to put in my next loop inside, which is for open bracket, int j equals to 0, because that's our starting point. j will also be less than height, so we'll put j as less than n, and j++, plus plus, okay? And what I want to do is that for this nested loop, if i plus j is less than n minus 1, we will print a dot, or else, we will print a hash. Okay? And then after that, I'll close the curly bracket. And I will print a backslash n. And then I'll close the rest of the curly brackets. So remember, we're supposed to print blank spaces and not dots. So just remember to replace your dot with a blank space. Okay? So let's just give it a try. Let's make Mario. Dot slash Mario. Okay, so now let's just give it a try. If I were to put n as maybe being 9, it should reject. Yep, let's try something a little bit different. If height equals to minus 1. Yep, okay. So now let's try as maybe height will be 3. Yep, so we can see we can get our right aligned pyramid and it looks really good. And now let's try one more where height equals to 8. Yeah, so 
There you go, so this is how we will print a right align pyramid using C and that will be the solution for your problem set for Mario Less. Right? There you go, you've got this. So if you found this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. This helps the algorithm. And also maybe for those who are looking for similar walkthrough solutions through this program, they will find this video to be helpful as well. And by you know subscribing or putting a like, this actually helps indicate to people that this video was actually useful. And maybe they will like this video too. Thank you so much.